When I hear the phrase Hong Kong cinema, these are the images that I think of. They were all made in the last two decades of the 20th century. Now think of a film that was made in the last five years. Anything pops up? In 2018, the total amount of Hong Kong locally produced film generated 7 million out of the 232 million US dollar from its box office. That's a tragic of 3.1% market share. So why don't we see films being made in this glamorous city that used to be the Hollywood ease anymore? Is that it for the cinema of Hong Kong? To know where it went, we have to understand its history. If you are a cinephile or interested in Asian cinema, you will probably notice that the most influential years of Hong Kong cinema was during the late 80s. The hybrid of Eastern and Western culture created a scene of physical action comedies, mythical Chinese fantasies, and triad crime thrillers. By the late 80s, the net gross of the film industry has exceeded India to become the second largest film entity in the world, right after Hollywood. It was the peak of an era, Hong Kong cinema became the leading figure of other Asian film industries, producing 400 films a year. Everybody was making the bucks and getting looks. But then something happened. As the British colony was soon to be handed over to the CCP, many feared the political instabilities and Sikhs lives elsewhere. Evoking a wave of immigration, talent and investors are reluctant to stay in the city. Leading figures such as Jackie Chan and John Woo left for Hollywood to continue their career while others immigrated elsewhere and fade out of the circle. In the same year, the Asia financial crisis exacerbated the film industry. Many film investors declined to finance productions as it would be too risky to do so at the time. Less investors means less films being made. Soon, Hollywood's market took a big bite out of the local market share. The audience lost confidence to their local cinema. By 2006, only 50 films were made in Hong Kong, while 30% of them are co-productions with China. And it is this co-production that saved the dying cinema of Hong Kong. Co-productions between Hong Kong and China has always existed since the early 80s. Back then, China had a niche to collaborate with foreign countries as a part of the economic reform. Co-productions with Hong Kong and Taiwan allowed the Chinese film industry to catch up from their counterparts. Many Hong Kong directors were attracted to the cheap labor and the wild natural landscape of China and produced films that features the traditional Chinese culture such as martial arts. Co-productions became rapid and great works like Ang Lee's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Wong Kar Wai's Ashes of Time, Farewell My Concubine, and Rise the Red Lantern were all co-produced. The leading figures of Asian cinema today were made during this period. The film industry's decline has made Hong Kong rely on co-productions, since China's film industry and market has grown tremendously and generates a whole lot more revenues than the local market. In 2003, an agreement was made to further allow collaborations between the two states. SEPA promised to rise the Hong Kong film industry from its depression, while liberalizing the film industry and popularizing mainland films beyond the scope of socialist propaganda films and art house fare. Co-production films with China can be imported as Chinese films into the Chinese market, while the rules of co-production became more forgiving. For example, the amount of mainland Chinese cast has to be involved in the co-production film dropped from 50% to a third. By 2012, 70% of films produced in Hong Kong are co-productions. If you look at the difference in box office between the two markets, you'll find out the cost for filmmakers abandoning the local markets and venturing into its northern counterparts. With great revenues comes with great compromises. To attract the larger Chinese market, Co-productions tends to favor mainland Chinese audience and features plots that embed a pan-Chinese identity. Jackie Chan's police stories became a Gong An story, or The New King of Comedy, a remake of a Hong Kong comedy classic with little Hong Kong market in mind. Even though films are being made by the same people, we don't get to see the films that are made with an aura of this Hong Kongness. 
a local identity. Instead, we're shown a pan-Chinese identity that caters to the larger crowd. The cinema has gained economic growth by sacrificing its cultural identity. The cinema of Hong Kong has gradually lost its ability to create a landscape that resonates with its local values. The Chinese hegemony in Hong Kong cinema are feared among many local filmmakers, worrying over the complete assimilation of Hong Kong's film market into China's. So where did this local identity went? I'm not saying that co-productions are bad. In fact, it saved the industry from its worst time and introduced a new avenues of filmmaking. While many films under SIPA is leaning towards a national identity, some films found a balance between two confusing identities and transcends the local values, in particular the prestigious crime thrillers categories. Films like The Protégé and Live Without Principle speaks for an identity crisis of Hong Kong at the time. On the other hand, filmmakers who struggled with the unpredictable Chinese business environment and its tight censorship towards certain themes and chose to stick with the local markets. Johnny To, famous for his triad action films, has always focused on the local market and made films that speaks for the Hong Kong identity. His 2005 film Election and its sequel comments on the lack of democracy in Hong Kong, while Excel gave a refreshing annotation to the classic gangster movie genre, was planned with the mainland Chinese market. In recent years, independent Hong Kong cinema has made its name among Asian and even international markets. Lots of these themes feature the fear for Chinese rulership, post-colonial Hong Kong reflections, and domestic social issues. While these films obviously don't have a big budget nor generating as much box office than the others, these are the voice of Hong Kong. The film 10 Years, a collection of dystopian story on the region, spoke truth about Kong's future and has proven its concern right when the national security law is announced to be implemented in 2020. There are thousands of indie films out there waiting to be discovered by people who cherish this identity one that might be gone in a couple of years. So to answer your question, the cinema of Hong Kong has gone a long way from its colonial times. The decline of one thing means the rise of another. Pan Chinese identity has took over the cinema for a while, but it's time that the local identity strive from its ashes. The pure local originality has not been eliminated by co-productions and the giant Chinese market. Instead, it fortified the demand for a Hong Kong local identity, made it clear that this identity needs to be remained even in its post-colonial days. <laughs>